Hello there guys and girls. Today I want to continue to educate all of you so you can make better cinematics and short movies with GTA 5. This video contains 11 big and small tips, tricks and best practices. Some of them also apply to consoles, so stick around as I let you in on a bunch of secrets, may it be creative techniques, troubleshooting, time savers or other lesser known methods. This tutorial is actually part 2 of a series because I made a similar workshop earlier with 33 secrets. Make sure to watch that as well, because if you don't, I know you're gonna use those 40 minutes to shoot up some H and this will ruin your entire life. Say no to drugs, say fuck yeah to the Nova. By the way, if you want to support my work, please consider checking out my Patreon page for some neat benefits. Why only 11 and not 33 this time? I kind of felt like it should be split up into more digestible portions. When I make these super long tutorials, I feel urged to speak rapidly, which makes it harder to understand all these steps shown in the video. This is why I'd rather show you less secrets per video and take my time explaining everything thoroughly instead. You can skip to any tip by selecting a chapter in the timeline or the video description. Down there you will also find the links to all the tools I'm using to create my content. So here we go, 11 machinima secrets nobody tells you about because they're all illuminati or freemasons or lizard people, pick your enemy. Remove duplicate characters. Okay, so I gotta get this one out of the way first, even though it should not actually be a secret. But I've been asked this so often in the past that if I had gotten a Bentley each time, I would need a very big garage by now. The question is, why do all characters appear twice in Rockstar Editor? The easy answer is, because you didn't delete these entities before going into the editor. Menu PC keeps all objects and characters that are in the database the way you left them. And then the Rockstar Editor shows the recorded versions of the characters on top of that. If you're using Scene Director like I suggested, it even shows this exact problem in a pop-up on the left side every time you load the tool. It suggests to restart GTA 5, but here's the much easier solution. When you're done recording, open menus, object spooner, go to edit multiple entities, select them all and then hit the delete button. You will also have to hide your player character somewhere. Et voila! No more Cronenberg body horror anymore. But this particular technical circumstance leads us to another interesting opportunity. Add props after shooting. If menu keeps all objects and pets and cars and stuff, then this must mean... I'm disgusting! Yes! You can actually add props to your clips after you have recorded them. So for example, there's another lockdown and on a lazy Friday night you decide to record a clip with some cool task sequences. But oh no! You forgot that one key element to the scene, like a smartphone on the table that is playing the music. You incredibly dumb f**k. Here's the trick. In the object spooner you select the saved map and load up all placements so you can have a better feeling for where to place your additional props, like this device on the table. Just carefully spawn and position the props you need for the scene. Also, let me put some barrels down here in the back for demonstration purposes. Don't forget to save the map with the added placements by overriding it. This will allow for better continuity if you want to do a reshoot. Now since all the other props are already baked into the recorded clip, you go to edit multiple entities down here, select all and then deselect only the props you added in just now. Then delete all marked objects and go to the Rockstar editor. As you can see, this is still the same old clip, but once you load it in, the new objects are there. Now, obviously this will be impossible to time if you need any interaction with the props. Also, they have no collision at all, so cars and people will just go through them. But it will work nicely with static objects, so for continuity, decoration and set design, this trick can be golden. Clear invalid entities. Here's another tip that revolves around the database and menus object spooner. Sometimes you will see invalid entities in the object spooner. 
This usually happens sometime after characters in the database die, vehicles are destroyed or if you haven't deleted all the entities before going to Rockstar Editor. Which is why you can still see the smartphone and the barrels from the previous example here. If you are doing multiple reshoots where you go back and forth between Rockstar Editor and Story Mode and thereby reload the same menu map over and over, these invalid entities can clutter your database. They can't be deleted the regular way through Edit Multiple Entities. You see? There isn't even a button for it. But if you go to Manage Database, Removal, you can actually choose to delete all the invalid ones easily. For comparison, when you pick a valid object, there will be a prompt to delete them. Then you can save a clean object database. Transfer marker settings. Let's talk about the Rockstar Editor a little more because I feel like you can all work with it a little more efficiently. If you have recorded a dialogue scene with two characters like this, you could place the camera with a new marker for every time a new line starts. As you can see, I have to switch back and forth here, which also means that the angle for character 1 has changed the second time he speaks. And it will be different every time I reposition the camera. If you want to switch between the angles more easily, you can use a neat feature of these markers. Just create the angle for character 1 like so. That includes positioning, zoom and depth of field. If you add a new marker on the timeline, the editor will transfer all settings over from the previous marker. Repeat this for every moment where this character has a line and you'll end up with a bunch of identical markers. Since in between character 2 is speaking, you can now set another marker and adjust the angle for character 2. Unfortunately, now, you can't do the same thing with the angle for this actor, because these markers can't be moved past each other. So a really neat addition to the GTA 6 Rockstar Editor would be if you could actually move markers anywhere on the timeline without that restriction, which would make it even simpler to copy angles. So unfortunately now, I have to redo the angle and depth of field for each of Trevor's replies. But a nice way to check if they are at least somewhat similar is to just click on the other marker here. The camera jumps just a little bit here, so I can make some corrections. Let me just fast forward this a little bit here during this process and then we can watch the nonsensical dialogue all the way through. Hey, I was enjoying that! Come on then! I got a cloud empire and a planet, and I'm a king, like everyone else. This is a power thing, buddy? You know, I was kind of enjoying that. Whoa. It ain't a cult. It ain't Whoa. a cult. It ain't a cult. This is horrible. Hey, I was enjoying that. You getting off on this, can't little put a price man? on self-actualization. Of course, the best way here would be to do it like in an actual movie. Place just one marker and let Michael's dialogue play out. And then duplicate the clip, change the first marker and save that. By setting the thumbnail here, it will be easy to spot in the timeline which clip is which. The big disadvantage here is that you have double the amount of footage to export but it gives you the most amount of freedom when editing. Workaround glitches in post. When working with GTA 5, you will often encounter some glitches or visual bugs that have not occurred during recording or editing your footage. Only after exporting, you realize that there are some issues like this annoying flickering right here. With this tip, I want to encourage you to work around these things whenever possible in post-production. So what I did in this example from Take Care, is to add an electric buzzing sound effect in Premiere Pro. So that the viewers would think it all happened on purpose. Not only does this save you time trying to figure out the damn glitch and how to avoid it, working around issues like that can be a great creative technique. Sometimes it will force you to find another camera angle that is even better than you had in mind before. Attach objects to a finger. 
I've shown you before how to attach objects to characters and usually it is fine to just pick right wrist or right hand if you want your actors to hold something. However, with some close-up shots of the hands this might not yield the best results, meaning that the object doesn't look like it is being held by the correct fingers. This is why Menu PC allows you to attach objects as precisely as choosing individual fingers for the left and right hand. I've done some testing to find out which is which, then I created a PDF guide that you can download for free. Just check the video description. Basically, the thumb is finger 0, the index finger is finger 1 and so on. The second number always indicates the part of the finger, with 0 being the tip of the finger, 1 the middle and 2 the base of the finger. As you can see I've got this smoking animation here. To make object placement easier I will slow down the world speed to 0.0, .0 when his hand is near his mouth. So to place the cigar I'm gonna select the finger to 1 and then move the attach object near that part of the finger. This will take some time because the X, Y and Z axes are hard to guess with this. I'll fast forward the rest. But as you can see, the cigar is now perfectly attached to Michael's middle finger. You can rinse and repeat this for a lot of different animations. By the way, this also works with the lower lip. So if you want a character to smoke while speaking like a true 90s badass, just attach it to this entry here and then play any speaking animation. Control the car, please. Oh yeah. Before I forget, you can actually apply the smoking thing so much easier without all the attachment bejazzle by just finding this synchronized animation in Scene Director here. So before you end up going crazy with attachments, check this list first. You can even create such synchronized animations yourself, but that's another topic for another video. Invisible Weapon For some scenes you'll need an invisible character that will not obstruct the view of the camera in Rockstar Editor later on. Menu has an invisibility setting in the player options for this. For instance, in SWAT, when I shot this pipe here, nobody was supposed to be in the building. So I made my character invisible and equipped a weapon. The problem? Doing it like that leaves the gun visible in game and in Rockstar Editor. Now there are two ways to hide a weapon. Equip the gun first and then make your character invisible with menu so the gun will be included. Alternatively, if you are already invisible, you could use Simple Trainer, go to the Weapon Options and select Hide Current Weapon. Watch out though, if your character is reloading the weapon, you will insert a visible magazine into the invisible weapon. So it is best to activate Infinite Ammo and Clip for this, because then there will be no reloading at all. Stay in last frame animations. I've told you about the different kinds of animational flags before and even created a useful PDF guide for this, which I've linked in the video description once again. If you don't know about it, you should definitely try the setting Stay in last frame here. I've been using this a lot in the past, for example in this particular scene. Oh my gosh, Benny is such a loser! The animation has the character looking at a phone with some weird pointing in between, which I don't like. By setting it to stay in last frame, the animation stops at the best moment. This setting is also available as a secondary task for the upper body only, which allows you to apply a generic sitting animation for the whole body and then playing only the top part animation like this. For animations that loop perfectly like this other one here, the last frame equals the first frame of the animation, which can also be useful in some situations. Stay in last frame doesn't look great for all animations. You just gotta experiment a little with this underrated setting. Since the character actually looks frozen, 
you can make them appear more alive by using keep looking at entity, so they can move their head around a little bit, and by letting them speak. I know what you're compensating for. Display entity surrounding box. Here's a very quick secret that is pretty much unknown. I've only discovered this after two years of using menu. If you go to the object spooner and into the settings, there is this cryptic little checkbox called display entity surrounding box. What it does becomes very apparent once it's activated. Upon selecting an object, you will actually see a bright blue box around it. This can be extremely useful when working with invisible objects. When positioning those, you no longer have to guess which direction is up, down, left or right. It is also practical when you are trying to attach very small objects to a character, because as soon as you attach them, their position changes and it can be hard to find them again. This turquoise box is a real eye-catcher in comparison. I tend to turn this setting on and off as needed, because I feel like keeping it active by default can obstruct your view at times. Keep multiple installs. Can I go online with mods installed? This is another thing I've been asked a lot in the past. If you switch between playing GTA Online and Story Mode a lot, you might get in trouble keeping any mods or trainers in your game folder. But removing each and every mod would be super tedious when you're using a bunch of tools like me. Luckily, there's an easy workaround for this. If you have enough space on your hard drive or SSD. I don't, but maybe you're luckier. You just gotta keep two GTA 5 folders in the install location. There is always one active folder called Grand Theft Auto 5 and the one you're not using should be called GTA 5 Clean or Unmodded if it's the vanilla version. Or GTA 5 Modded if it's your dirty dirty nasty version full of forbidden fruit. So instead of copying from one folder to another like me, which takes forever at 90 gigabytes, you just rename the folders and can quickly switch the install. Breaking the fourth wall. I've talked about the task keep looking at entity in my task sequence tutorial before as it is extremely useful in dialogues. The characters will actually look at each other instead of staring into the void. There are also some shots where you want a character to break the fourth wall, which means looking into the camera, like during narrations in a news format and such. This means there won't be a character to look at, since it would obstruct the camera view in Rockstar Editor later on. Luckily there's also the task Keep Looking at Position, which does basically the same thing. All you have to do is to set the position to the camera target and then adjust the marker manually until your character is looking in the right direction. But of course, there's a big but here. At least for me, this feature is bugged and won't work when Keep Task Running is activated here. Since this is really useful though, I have a better idea. Just spawn any small object and make it invisible. Then use Look at Entity and select that object. This works much better and is more reliable. By moving the object you could even simulate the character's head turning as if he is looking at a camera on a dolly track. The coolest thing about this is that even during speaking animations where the head is moving, the eyes stay focused on the object you determined. I'm looking forward to learning my lines and exercising tomorrow. I love my job and working out. In Rockstar Editor you have to position the camera exactly in the line of sight of the character. The distance doesn't really matter so you can do close ups, medium or long shots as you prefer. I like to move in close, to really see where the eyes point and then move the camera out a little bit. I'm feeling so good. And that's how you create a convincing news anchor. So yeah, that's about it for this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed this format in a shorter video, with slower pace and more details about how to apply certain techniques. I realize that some of my other tutorials were spoken really fast and I apologize. I've got much more of these machinima secrets to share, so stay tuned, subscribe and consider supporting my work on Patreon. Thank you for watching. Vanova. Over.